All right, welcome. <laughs> that was so loud. Okay. <laughs> 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 <It's like laughs> the dog saw the fuck guy. I was like, oh shit, I don't want to fuck this up. And then... <laughs> it was, I was like, shut up. I was like, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Welcome back to uh, the Guildies podcast, episode 15. Uh, we had a little break. Some of us had work, some of us did not. Uh, but. We're back now, and that's what counts. Today we have a really exciting episode, uh, but first I'm joined by the entire cast uh, of the Guildies podcast. I don't need to introduce you guys. They know who you are. They know who you are. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Uh, Sh- Sean, how you doing? We'll do it anyway. Fuck it. I'm we'll great, do dude. it on the Guildies podcast. We'll do it live on the Guildies podcast. Live on the Guildies podcast. Po- yeah, live from Radio City, New York. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's Saturday night. Yo. Yeah, it's Saturday. It is f- Friday night lights. It's, it from is Saturday. Saturday night. Yeah. It is Saturday. It's not Saturday. It's fr- I'm not doing yes, this. It is Hi, Bear. Hi, Bear's on the podcast. <laughs> hello. How you doing, Bear? Hello. 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 How's it? How's it over in uh, Queens- Queensland? Queensland. Hey. I I am not in Queensland. I know that was that was that was. I don't want to tell him where you're from. I am from. No, if you guys didn't um, know this bear is wanted by Interpol. So <laughs> yeah, damn. No, nah, it's good. It's cold. It's winter. So it's cold. Bear. It's like weird that you guys get winter. <laughs> that we get. It's a just season of the year. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like weird to me. Like I don't. I feel like you don't. Like right now is like your coldest month, right? Yeah, we're like. Probably like it's it's got probably gonna get cold as it gets like around this time of year. So. See, I don't. That just ain't right. <laughs> something about okay. that. Something about what? that just don't sit right with me. Uh and Dildor, how are you doing, my friend? I am good. I know exactly how it is where you are because it's where I am. Mm-hmm. It was ninety three today. Yeah, not not epic. No- What's well, that in normal people weather? That that is normal people. <laughs> Fahrenheit is not normal people measurement. <laughs> yeah, Fahrenheit anyway. 911. It is 33.8. Okay, thank you. <laughs> He's like in Celsius <laughs> in Fahrenheit, I don't get it. Um, okay. What's the Kelvin on that. Uh guys, I went to the eye doctor today. I'm just going to give you a little story. I went to the eye doctor today. Um and I didn't I didn't set up the appointment. My mom set up the appointment for herself and then she's like you're gonna go, and I'm like, I don't, <laughs> I don't need to go. Why do you? So I go, you know, because everyone knows my mom is insane. Like a good little kitty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I am a cat, and uh, <laughs> do the thing, do the whole thing, and and the guy's walking out, and he's like, okay, so here's the steps, and she'll take you over to the eyeglasses spot where they have like all their stuff, and uh, I don't have uh, vision insurance. Uh, and also wouldn't buy a three hundred pair of glass, uh, three hundred dollar pair of glasses. So we walk in there, and she's like, "Okay, I'll, I'll be right back." I just blah blah blah, and she like leaves the paper for my prescription behind the counter. Like open a open a like hatch door thing, go behind the counter, <laughs> and uh, she walks off. And I walk over to one of the glasses because I was like, "I'll humor them. Maybe they're like, I got a good discount." And it's like it's a pair of Ray Bans, and I look at the price tag, and it's three hundred and thirty dollars. And I opened up that hatch and went and got it, and left without saying anything. <laughs> I, I was just like, Ew. and I like, I looked at, it, I was like, Yee! and I walked over and took it and left. Wow, dude! So they're probably wondering where that went. Imagine spending a lot of money on glasses, bro. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna use that General mm-hmm. Sam uh, promo. Oh, look at you! Oh, yeah, yeah, for the like, for the. I think the it's Zenny, bro. Warby Parker, yeah, some Zenny, yeah. Dragon Ball Z Seven. money. Zenny, we go. We can't think monsters, bro. Or Zenny? Ooh, oh, but Zenny. Yeah. true. Okay, we're getting a little off topic, which is my fault. No. <laughs> so today's podcast. I want to go back and take a look at uh, Oblivion. If you all constantly remind yourself about the Guildies 
uh, good versus evil list, Oblivion is on the good side. <laughs> We did a good versus mm-hmm. evil list. Well, you got to think like what's what implied. We, it's implied. Like we. Oh, okay. Like, okay. Oblivion. How do you get the memo? And, uh, wow. There are and, like, of the podcast. Yeah. There. Yeah. Exactly. There's. There's like sanctioned unholy enemies of the podcast, like, uh, like TikTok or um, Reddit mm-hmm. or Reddit. Yeah, yeah. 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 Reddit. Harry Potter. Like, yeah. Harry Harry Potter. <laughs> um. All of Ireland. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, so, uh, so Oblivion's on the the positive side, right? Uh, Oblivion is a an abject force of good, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we've all always agreed that it's fantastic. But I don't think we've ever talked about it at length on the podcast. And I thought, uh, what better time than uh, Gildy's season two, episode one, uh, which will not be used for this title, but but, <laughs> but it's it's a working title that won't be used how long ago did we do the last episode how long ago it was about a month like a full month okay it wasn't that bad not terrible no it wasn't that bad at all um so here we are fellas oblivion who would like to uh who'd like to start off with some obliviousms obliviousms yeah dude go ahead man you want me to take it um, yeah, dude. I've been playing a lot of Oblivion recently. Uh, started her back up, and I made like a not meme character. A not like you know. You know All right, you, I, I, you, no, okay. you know. I you believe know I mean. you. I believe you that you didn't make a meme character with how the character models look in that game. I refuse to believe to take that game. <laughs> so, okay, like, so so <laughs> so here's the first step into this discussion, and me and Sean have talked about it, <laughs> but. <laughs> one of the things i love dearly about this game and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about why this is um is that even when the game is at its absolute most serious it is still hilarious <laughs> just hilarious and Dude, like disgustingly it, ugly yeah it's phenomenal and there's there's a lot of character to it that I, you kind of forget about what you know because I, I thought about it the other day. We've been playing this game for over a decade. Like Oblivion <laughs> came out in like two thousand and what seven, six, I think uh, six. Like almost fifteen yeah. years of Oblivion. <laughs> exactly fifteen years of Oblivion. March twentieth, actually. Wow. Mm. There's Pretty certain close. there's certain parts of the game that like. <clears throat> Like just the game didn't mean to be hilarious. Like it clearly never right. meant to be like unbelievably funny. But no matter what you do, the the <laughs> the like dialogue uh, is is it's, even it's in the hot. most funniest yeah. game of all time. Yeah, even in the most like dire circumstances, it's it's funny, and you can tell it doesn't mean to, which makes it way funnier. Yeah. It's like they just they almost they almost hit the mark with the uh, with like the convincing real world, but then they you know it's just full of bugs and they also only hired like three voice actors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, it's just unbelievably funny at, at all times. It's like basically... watching Public Access when you're a kid. It's like all these people that are trying their hardest but just not <laughs> quite getting it. It's there's basically. Because there's one for, like, male and female, but I think there's, like, three male voice actors and three female besides, like, significant characters. Because it's, mm-hmm. like, and they even overlap. It's, like, I think, because I remember, like, some of the elves have, like, the same voice actor and then, like, a, like Imperial and Nord are the same or something like that. I mm-hmm. can't remember them all offhand, but, yeah, it's only a handful of voice actors. And then you have their their big back of the box selling point was like radiant AI. So it was supposed <laughs> to be people going about their everyday routines, but then you go up, they go up to each other and have these insane conversations. Like, hello, I hear the fighters guild is looking for new members, <laughs> mud crabs, filthy creatures. <laughs> crash. Good day. Like it's just, that they don't even acknowledge what the other person's saying. So it's mm-hmm. like, they do have routines, but like, what are those routines? Like, it just, yeah, they're goofy interactions and it's them just 
they sit down in a chair at 3 p.m. every day. It's like it's not <laughs> that yeah. immersive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then the thing is, too, that's also the goofy thing that you're kind of getting into about the ugly potato people. But <laughs> and the, the reason, like, if you notice that there's no beards at all for any races, it, right. and that's because oh, yeah. they were trying to get the facial animations correct for the most ridiculous bullshit mini game that is the speech skill. <laughs> oh, oh bro. I never dude. realized that till you Yeah, besi yeah besides besides like Shigorath, there's no beards. Right. And it's even it's really goofy cuz then like there's like a NPC dialogue that's like add any more hairs to a Nord and you'll have a bear, but then they're all clean shaven. <laughs> <and they're> just... <laughs> like they it's just like really goofy. Puppets, bro. Yeah, but that's the thing because you're supposed to recognize the different faces like when you do speech craft and that was like all built around that because it'd be too hard to animate the beards or the beards would cover up their faces Dude. so you couldn't do it Indie company. It, is a, so. it is a bad mini game and like oh yeah I lament that it's a skill it's I forgot it was a skill yeah I... it's not it's oh. it's not worth using and then the thing Ever. too is like <laughs> It's it's supposed to kind of take the place of barter because there's no like in Fallout you can have like speech checks, but that isn't really in there. So yeah. instead, it's kind of mainly used as for your bartering skill. But the problem is, once you hit at a certain point, you'll have enough money that you just mash bribe and then <laughs> like you can do what you want. Yeah. Especially if that's like a specific quest where you have to have somebody like an Argonian like you enough, all you do is you just mash bribe. You don't even have to fuck around with the mini game. Yeah, you just that's, win it. <laughs> that's a really interesting point. I was thinking about that. I think it's one of the Thieves Guild quests or the Dark Brotherhood one. And it's it's one where you have the option, like it's it's in the game to like either charm them or bribe them. And like I've, I'm like a level two, like what else? Like I, I, my speech craft isn't super high, so you just, the bribe is the correct, the correct way to do it. Like you, can, I, my, I can't do it. It's, <laughs> yeah. They hate small cannibals. I don't, I can't make it happen. <laughs> How dare they? How dare they? I know. Oblivion to me, though, when you talk about like the fullness of it in terms of of like what it ended up being. Um, I think, and, and let me preface what I'm about to say with this. I did not make this episode. I bring up this topic just so I could uh, overhand hardballs at Skyrim. Um, <laughs> but I'm about to, cause I've been playing that recently too. Um, there's something about oblivion where like you get to the end of it and you experience all these things and you're like not frustrated with it. Or like bored with it. Like you all these things happen and it's like you're like enjoying these gigantic mishaps that this game has. Whereas like when I play Skyrim and I get like all the bugginess and that, I'm like it doesn't feel charming to me. Kill like, me. Yeah. It it like in no way feels like It's aggravating if anything. Yeah, exactly. I don't know how to describe that about Oblivion because by a lot of standards, um, there's a lot of stuff in Oblivion that's just empirically worse um <laughs> like the combat like the combat in oblivion oh god is dude, not poggers not good it's, it is fucking rough it right? is it, and especially coming back to it i always i always remembered it with like a little bit more more dynamics um <clears throat> there are none they either run straight they run straight at you that's all that's <laughs> That's all it is. Yeah. What's that, man? The enemies don't have any complicated attack patterns, like regardless of what you're doing. It's always just like making a beeline for you and smacking yeah. you or <laughs> throwing spells at you. And then it's none of the three like disciplines, like the balance is kind of all over the place. Because melee, it seems like it'd be the easiest one or like almost like it would point at you in that direction because mm -hmm. you find all the weapons right. but then melee is kind of the worst option mm -hmm. because of the other two you can kite people so easily you just get mm -hmm. slight elevation like stand on a rock and you can just shoot arrows or magic at people forever and not to mention like especially like stealth archer which is like kind of the most broken build and it's probably the same in skyrim too mm -hmm. but like you hit a point where you're just so fast that you can just run in circles, like kiting them forever, and like the challenge is just gone. 
Yeah. And then yep. you can also like just shoot people and then they don't actually alert to you because you're at the right distance where they'll take damage. <laughs> they'll have to be standing there yeah. with arrows stuck in them, but they won't uh, aggro. Yeah. yeah, or or your sneak is high enough where you can like be like next to them and like hit them and then they're just like, ooh. Must have been yeah. the wind. Yeah, it must have been my fat dick. Um so <laughs> that's that's one that I wanted to talk about a little bit with Oblivion is Oblivion is like a a woman to me. Now you say, Hayden, what could a you, woman? What could you mean? It's like a it's like a fair lady to me. Okay, I like the idea of the Oblivion class system. <clears throat> I like the I like the role play idea that you pick what you're gonna be, that you're gonna role play this character. Right? I like mm-hmm. that idea. The issue is that 15 years ago, it wasn't working. It's not working now. <laughs> it's working yeah. like less good. Because what I didn't like about Skyrim is like I want it like if I wanted to be like a slithering, scathing little shithead Argonian like thief archer thing, like it's very weird that I could like use one handed one time and now I'm at like level eighty one handed. Um and so I, I always like wanted it to be like more class specific, but in Skyrim you basically just become God, who's like a yeah. a master of all kinds of combat and weaponry. Yeah. Well, the thing that's weird is that like you have to, you're almost compelled to metagame like the Oblivion <laughs> leveling system. Yes. Because for <laughs> those who don't know, you have major skills and minor skills minor skills you can level up to no consequence forever like until cap but then your major skills after i believe it's 10 level ups across all your major skills like dispersed however then you have a character level up but the thing is like when you do a character level up every the whole world scales up to go along (laughs) with your level and then depending on how you leveled up those individual major skills determine your like core character like strength and agility stat boosts. So if you just like bam one skill, like if you just level alteration or something like crazy and then you level up, you'll get like plus 5 to the like magic stat or whatever, but then everything else will only be plus 1. So you can really just screw yourself over completely. And that's why a lot of people just do level one builds where you just you put all your major skills as stuff you'll never use. And then all the stuff you actually want to use are minor skills that you can level to no consequence. Yeah. So it's it's just yeah, not a good horrible system. Like yeah. you have to you have to make a character mess up your level ups and then start over knowing how it works. <laughs> it's it's really bad. And it's like actually kind of hard to do correctly. Like to it is well because you wanna like you wanna level up because like how am I ever gonna get sweet sweet ebony armor if I'm ebony. if I have a hundred hours at level one how right, right. how am I gonna get to a bony because <laughs> it's not it's not even just the enemies that scale it's also the armor so then like the, your random leveled loot that you'll find in dungeons will just like never get to the higher tiers if you stay level one forever. Yeah, I am finding rusty iron maces everywhere. Yeah. Hey, don't miss my army the rusted iron mace. Yeah, and, <laughs> and you're right. And you're right. What a great mace. Uh, so that's a problem. Um, <laughs> it's not <laughs> aged really, really well. Um, I also forget how just janky... NP- any movement is any npc movement True. i remember having a little bit more flow to it and they'll just like glide over rocks and shit and like, oh, yeah. there's no elevation change so they're just like running oh, straight yeah. up like an elevator there's so much of that that i'm just like oh i thought their feet were like kind of dynamic with it at, at... Mm-hmm. <laughs> but they they weren't or how when Ooh. you jump you just T pose and ascend into the air briefly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, because that's the thing that's kind of like, I guess you could say it's the problem or just like an aspect of the Elder Scrolls series, at least Morrowind through Skyrim, is that it's very much as a jack of all trades, master of none. Whereas, like, yeah. 
a lot of elements are kind of weak. And another, like, big problem with Oblivion is, like, there's a lot of issues with it, despite it being a fun game. It's like, <laughs> the, the dungeons are also egregious, especially, I was, this, like... This was my next point, but yeah, go the, on. <laughs> the, like, all the dungeons are basically a set of, like, a few templates of what they look like aesthetically, but then they just kind of mix and match the rooms. And yep. then the, one of the main aspects of or it's the namesake of the game is the oblivion gates which are also kind of important to the story is they're also very unfun copy paste dungeons that at a certain point especially if you do like a agility type character you can just speed run through everything ignore yeah, all the yeah. enemies yeah. <laughs> touch the little heart at the end and the then sigil. close the gate yeah. the sigil yeah it's and the thing is too is like some of them are required later for the very abysmal main oh story but then there's also i think like a hundred of them in the world and the rewards aren't good for doing any of them so it's just a lot of like unfun filler content well and and part of the the thing with the i could i could i would be fine with the dungeon part because there's you, you think about there's like the mine shaft ones that they'll mix with the regular ones there's the 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 regular dungeons obviously there's the alien ruins um and i'm i think i'm missing one kind uh but my big issue is that the first few that you find aren't like a huge pro oh like the fort the fort dungeons um yeah my problem is not necessarily that it's copy and paste because Going back through it, there's a, I think there's enough rooms where you usually aren't finding like anything too similar. Um, it's that there's there's like, it's just dead ends, and some of the dungeons like later in the game are like seriously like you take an hour getting through the dungeon, and so you've been fighting and kiting and healing and doing the whole thing, and you're like. The dungeon is massive, and then you have to try and go back across it, and then sometimes there's like jumps that you have to make or like like T sections where you're like, which way do I go? And it's, it, <laughs> it's not for the best at all. Well, yeah, That's it, like for it, sure. It, one thing Skyrim has on oblivion. Yeah. Well, it's and the thing frustrating, especially the, when they involve elevation. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Different levels and you can see it, but you just can't get there. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they don't show up on the map either. It doesn't yeah, exactly. differentiate between <laughs> levels. <laughs> So it's why would it kind of horrendous? Yeah. Well, it's... the thing is too is like that Skyrim has over Oblivion is that all the dungeons will wrap around and have like a shortcut at the end. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The beginning. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. That is that is really nice. And and in in Oblivion's defense, all the Skyrim dungeons also pretty much have the same problem. There's a few like Draugr ruins that have some like unique like puzzle rooms but for the most part it's like catacomb wall blah blah mm. blah there's a lot of that so in oblivion i'm glad that i don't have to um match the picture of the bird with the bird on the stone <laughs> oh my god bro oh, <laughs> yeah like, i know the, the take is all the, like you know, I don't feel like my intelligence is insulted. I just feel like I'm playing a fucking shitty ass game. Yeah. All the fucking claws, bro. Like, it's so stupid. Yeah, bro. you have to yeah. like inspect like, the like, claw to see the. Like, oh, it happens. It's it's Resident so Evil. Pointless, bro. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, oh. Do you think this is like fun? Like, you could have. Maybe this means that you sh just shouldn't have put that in if, what? You, if you have to make it like yeah. something that wouldn't be engaging to only a two year old. Well, and they don't add anything. Like they they no. they're never like it just like opens the door to the next room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and then you just sell it straight off. Like, yeah, <laughs> yep. like, yeah. There there's there's a lot right. of that in in Skyrim where I'm like we honestly. You could have just made me kill something to make this door open. Like it would have been a thousand yeah. times more engaging if you just made yeah. like I mean just fight drug or big boss penis overlord and like okay, I'll fight him and then the door opens. Shouts at you and you lose your weapon and you get really angry and you stop playing. So. Yeah, there is some cool uh quality of life stuff with Skyrim that uh I'd perhaps like to address with this, but uh onwards on on the great uh the great equalizer known as Oblivion um 
Let me talk about some good things with Oblivion. And I think we all might disagree on this one, but I'm not tolerating differing opinions anymore. So, mm. so, so. I'm ready to agree. Lay it on yeah, us. Yeah. Um, I think, and I directly compare this to Skyrim because I think they're the, the two that are most important in the series. Obviously, Morrowind is an amazing and uh, probably better game than both. That's that's a lie, but it it is amazing, and it's it was it was the progenitor to a lot of the things we're talking about. But the world in Oblivion, I still think, feels a lot fuller and a lot more interesting than the Skyrim one. Um, and I say that just from the perspective of like the cities have a lot of character to them, and all of them have character. I guess Skingrad and Anvil are kind of similar, but it's like one. Um. And then I feel like there's a there's just more colors, uh, <laughs> and there's also colors. Yeah, there's colors and like the Shivering Isles content, even though it's like not finished, very, I think was artistically very interesting. I kind of agree with you. I think I think in the in regards to the towns, from what I can recall, I think Skyrim does a little, a little bit better at times. Like stuff like Markarth and all that, they're like very. I feel like they're a lot more unique. But I do agree, like the some of the worlds in compare, like some of the towns in comparison, especially like the fucking swamp town and Farcrease and all that kind of place. That they're like very just copy and paste. Well, that's that's my point, and that what is what I, that's what I was gonna say is like Markarth, um, Riften's pretty sweet, and um, I guess Solitude. Right? Is that Solitude, the yeah. two on the left side of the map and the one on the bottom right? Right? That's Markarth, Solitude, and Riften. Yeah. Those yeah. have some identity. It's like they had ideas there, but like every other town, I'm like, I am looking at copy and pasted buildings. Like Dawnstar. Yeah. Like Dawnstar and, and Whiterun and the other Winterhold or Winter, what, Whiterun. And I, there's a billion of them. I don't remember. And just all of them. Yeah, there's two Whiteruns, bro. Did I say Whiterun? Hold on. Yeah. What, what, is that, what is the other one called? Winterhold? Is that the one up? Like it's Winterhold's the, the, yeah, it's the Storm, it's the Stormcloak stronghold, essentially. Yeah. I, it's it, the capital of Skyrim. Let me look at this. Let me look at this. Let me look at this. It's a bit more unique, but I think it, it's still very, like, stony and generic. You yeah, know? It, it, no. To me, it was just, like, I never felt any identity. Morthal also is the exact same. Um, Terrible. I, I never... <laughs> I just never had... They, like, never had any identity. Where When I think about, like, Breville and Leowin, which is, like, kind of a weird, like, <laughs> almost, like louisiana like colonialism like plantation owner that i when what? i was playing it again no it didn't, like the the building designs and the the whole like swampy thing in leowin i'm kind of like uh... the bayou. <laughs> yeah like the, the bayou, bayou and it's i you know exactly what i'm saying don't act like i did. everyone from america here knows what i'm saying <laughs> ah yes um but i feel like they had a lot of identity i feel like there weren't a lot of cities that were the same, um, which I really, you know, like Scheidenhall is like a, like almost Germanic, like Bavarian art style. It has the Tudor style yeah. building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I like that. And the overworld, I shouldn't say it's like more interesting because it, they, I mean, they had just less to work with. But in Skyrim, there's a lot of points where I'm like, I have seen this gray-brown cliff face before, and I think I'm going to kill myself. Sure. <laughs> that was my sure. big issue with Skyrim, because, yeah, like you said, Oblivion just has so much color and, like, variance and envi environments and, like, color palettes, whereas Skyrim, it just the entire world feels gray. Like, I feel like all the gray mountains and snow and shit, and everybody looks like they're caked with dirt 24-7. And yeah. it just... Like everybody's like frowning constantly too, and it's just like it's just very kind depressing. of depressing. Yeah. Whereas like in the you could say like well Morrowind isn't colorful either, but at least it has like the surreal otherworldly vibes that many people have like brought up before, and like just interesting architecture and like the silt striders and stuff yeah, like oh, that. Like Morrowind has a 
thousand times more character than Skyrim. Right. I mean, and and Morrowind's another one where, at the time, they the what they did with the assets they had was very good. Because it, it was an Agreed. it was a hundred and ten percent like a different. I mean, just like a different time with different technology, and and mm-hmm. for all the horrible things you could say about Robert Howard, um, <laughs> it, uh, Robert it, Howard. it it was you know there's there's a lot there's a lot of variance to it as much as it could have. <laughs> Anyways, go on. You can't just compliment the guy, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get with uh, Tolkien, Elo, Todd Howard, I said bro. good things about him. I said he did a good job. Me, bro. You're done. You're done, bro. This works. Hey, why isn't there halberds in my Elder Scrolls game? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but true though. True. Yeah, Paul where have they gone? Yeah, fucking please. Um, rest in peace. Rest in peace. No. Speaking no. of weapons and. I feel a bit more of the combat side of things again. Go on. There's a... There's... <laughs> yeah, you're okay. <laughs> Hold on. What okay. the fuck, bro? I choked on my water in it. <clears throat> okay, I'm right. I'm right now. I'm good. All right. Anyway, um, on the topic of combat, mm-hmm. again, it's... This, there's a, it's This has been, like, since I was young, like, when I played... Like, this was when Shivering Isles just came out on back on 360. Mm-hmm. All right, this is really old. Mm-hmm. I was playing it, and I think a couple years later, however long I'm talking, until Skyrim came out, and I, I went back to play Morrowind for, no, Morrowind, fucking Oblivion for a bit. And obviously, me being young and stupid, I was like, this is terrible, I want the new game. I, looking back now, something I've always really... didn't I really didn't appreciate um, Oblivion for was... The magic system, I feel, is a very big thing. Yes, this like, is on my the magic. Notes. It was it was insane the stuff you could do with that in comparison to what we got with Skyrim, and also another very minor thing, um, ma- using magic when you have your know, shield and a sword really again, like push the RP of you being a spell sword or something like that. Whereas in Skyrim, it's like, oh no, a dragon! I better swap the fire. <laughs> you have to hit the favorite menu. Yeah. Scroll down. Hold on, dragon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, where, yeah. Where, 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 again. Yeah, it's it it's there's stuff like that where it just says I feel like I don't know maybe it's just engine limitations or something, but it felt hold like on. such a no, step. No, 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 no. Hold on. Now hold on. <laughs> Are you trying to explain away the fact that that the Go newer on. game had? More engine limitations than the old game. <laughs> Listen, I just want to get it on the books here. I want to get it in writing. I ain't saying nothing, bro. I'm yeah. just... Cosign, because that was some real shit you just said. <laughs> Jeez. Um. Yeah. No. Just. Yeah. Magic system again is like it's just so like I watching videos on it alone. Like someone casts a spell and they get frozen, then they get fucking something landing on them or something or like they get fucking launches the atmosphere dude you know it's just one of <sighs> i think maybe the highlight of the oblivion engine and what was going on with that is the magic system there's clearly a lot of love that went into it uh and also zero balance uh which is true which true. is hilarious <laughs> and funny uh but you had so much that's what that is like one of the best RP things I can think of in the game in any of and really any RPG. The spell making in Oblivion was just fucking bonkers. There was so much of it and you could you could do literally anything with it. Um yeah, it was totally fine that it was pretty broken. Yeah. Well, cuz it was hard to use. Like by the time you were right. having broken spells, you were fighting broken enemies, so it was okay. <laughs> So right. Was, yeah. Think, fair. I also think it was it was with how broken it was. It was so fun. So you know you aren't like thinking you aren't like ruining the fun yourself by like being like this overpowered beast. You're like laughing as you're doing it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because so. this is probably one of your only chances to have any strength <laughs> in the game because you, <laughs> the game the game is set up in this like horrible like bell curve of like you gain any strength and everyone around you gains like a billion strength. So. More, you had to yeah. be smart or like you could wait until you got and here's you know here's a bad one uh, 
that reminds me of it. In the same way that items scale when you level up, there are certain items that you would get at each level that then would not scale again. So for example, whenever you found Fingers of the Mountain, the spell, it would stay at that level. <laughs> so if yeah. I found Fingers of the Mountain at level three and then I leveled to level nine, it's now like a useless level three spell that does like <laughs> two damage. But if I wait until I'm like level 30 and then I get Fingers of the Mountain, it literally kills everything. Not good. Yeah, that's a pretty big, uh, pretty big oversight. I remember having to play around that back in the day. Like, uh, you know, I want to go do this quest or whatever, but I know that the reward is good, so I just have to not. I just have to wait a really long time to do it if yeah. I don't want to. If I want to get the full power of this item, which and and something I was thinking about before, it's stuff like that and stuff and some of the other stuff we were talking about before, like the leveling system that kind of um, contradicts the whole you can do whatever you want. It's like, no, you have to be actually, like, pretty oh, yeah. goddamn rigid. Oh, extremely. Yeah, and it's, it, I mean, it's at a point where I, I don't think that was, like, on purpose. Like, I no. think that was just, like, okay, does the it work? Yep, that. gone. <laughs> yeah, ship it. Yeah. Gone. Well, yep. we'll hot fix it. Uh, what's the what's the Dark Brotherhood we'll knife? Is it Smolderthorn? What's it called? That's not right. Ooh, I'm that's Smolderthorn. That's, that's a wo that's a wow thing. What is the Dark Brother uh, Oblivion? Did you just name drop Smolderthorn tribe? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, I did. That was Stranglethorn Vale. Blade of Woe. Oh yeah. Hit the war. Excuse me. Hit the war. <laughs> <laughs> there was like a there's a curved one there's like an elven blade that oh man what a cool set of armor elven stuff is really cool uh, that's another one the the designs in oblivion for when i was a kid felt really cool <laughs> like True. getting like an elven piece of gear was like oh or getting glass or glass yeah what the oh, yeah. why is glass of <laughs> Yeah, it's not good armor. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a trick one. Don't make it glass. Yeah, like the damage is really high on the weapons, but then they shatter instantly. God, it glass looks fucking ugly in Oblivion, bro. Ooh, I think Daedric looks really good in Oblivion. Like way better than it does in Skyrim. Daedric, I don't remember Daedric. Daedric. It's the Darth Maul armor. Oh, dude, this looks like something out of Power Rangers, bro. Like, <laughs> it, it looks like... Oh, it's, also true. It, it's like, oh, I'm going to attack Zordon in the Power Rangers. <laughs> it's it's just, uh, no, I guess the Daedric armor in, in Skyrim isn't bad now that I look at it again. I don't know. There's something... It just doesn't feel evil, whereas like the Oblivion one felt true. like... I agree. The Oblivion one just looks like... The person wearing it would, you know, kick a puppy. Whereas, I don't know, the one in Skyrim, it felt more like, I don't know, it's, I don't know, passive evil, I guess. Yeah, I, yeah, I got gotcha. you. I think, I think the red pickup evil versus passive pickup evil. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I do agree. That the the red armor definitely gives off a more evil vibe, bro. I think Oblivion had, uh, and this kind of goes with the writing. What I kind of wanted to talk about, and this kind of ties into Shivering Isles, which I think really exemplifies uh, how little of an idea they had about what they wanted to do. Um, there's so many points in Oblivion where, like, the writing and the quest are just, like, it, they just do whatever the hell they want whenever they want. <laughs> like, there is no rhyme or reason. Like, the the quest with the, the kid or the guy who's keeping his mom's severed head in his basement. Jesus Christ. Dude. Man. What an amazing one, and also just, like, a random quest <laughs> that you're yeah. like, uh, you do it, and you're like, oh, I'm going to do the quest for blah, 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 and it's like... Is is that one not part of either, like, the Thieves Guild or the Dark Brotherhood? I don't think it's the Dark Brotherhood. I want to say it's almost the Thieves Guild. Maybe I was just doing that at the same time or because of the city that it's in, but, uh, yeah, it's the Lighthouse one. Yeah, yes. 
but I don't remember which quest line. Point look out, GM. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, but it's stuff like that where you're you're just like, are you? <laughs> you're like, okay, that's so weird. Okay. Well, but that's Design like choice. the thing that's good about Oblivion too is the like sheer variety of quests. Yeah. No, absolutely. Like that's this. I think it's something to be praised. Like there's the like there's a sunken like ghost ship one. Yeah, the forlorn watchman, bro. Oh, yeah, and oh dude, like, that one was sweet. And then um, well, because there's two different ghost ship ones. Or at least one's like a sunken ship that's filled with ghosts. And then there's that other one where the the boat like rolls into the harbor in, yeah. in, in Imperial City. I forgot but, about yeah. that. That's a really good one. And then, yeah, the main strength of Oblivion, it's, like, the core content, if you're going to do anything, is just all the guilds. Like, the bulk of, like, the best quests are all in the guild stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, except, yeah. except for Mage's Guild. That one's pretty weak, but... <laughs> Mage's. That, that meme <laughs> I sent. <laughs> yeah. I, it's not true. I care for all my storylines equally later that <laughs> earlier that day. I don't care for the Mage's Guild. <laughs> Yeah. true though dude yeah it's kind of rough even in morrowind it's rough stuff early on we're like early quests in morrowind is you picking flowers for the mages guild <laughs> like those are yeah good dude yeah dude dude the dream quest in mages guild that's mages guild right play when mages that, guild, right? that one is a independent thing where you travel into people's dreams that's There's not whole, that's not a mages guild a, one no, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's. It might be a recommendation for the Mages Guild. Yeah. But I want to say it's also it's an independent one, where you travel inside a different dreams. Like one's an arena, another one is yeah. like a pathway through like this weird void. Yeah. And well, then another iconic one is also when you travel inside of a painting too. Oh yeah, the oil paintings and the oil trolls and shit, dude. Oblivion was just like. <laughs> whatever the fuck I want to do, whatever dumb ass story I want to tell, I'm gonna fucking tell it. Yep, yeah. that is something I do. Rise love about that crack game. Where when they were just Dude, the serious, I line. forgot about that troll one until just now. And you go find like the Ooh, magic dude. paintbrush. That one was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm like excited by that. That one was really good, dude. It's stuff like that. And part of what made Shivering Isles really interesting to me as a kid, um, and this is like before I knew what like. HP Lovecraft was. Um, Shivering Isles is just like even more of them being like, I'm going to tell these insane ass fucking stories. Like, I know it's supposed to be like the realm of the Mad God or whatever, uh, Shigoras game. realm. Yeah, the game. Yeah, Exalt. <laughs> uh, but, but there's, you, you get in right away, and the guy who's like, the bones talk to me. They're talking to me on the other side of the fence, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't... And I loved Whoa. it. I thought it was so absurd and fantastic and, like, probably should have, like, been... Like, it should have felt different from the rest of the game, but you get to Shivering Isles and you're like, this is just Cyrodiil. Like, I don't... Yeah. Nothing... There's a lot of... What's a good strength about Oblivion is that there's a lot of, like, non-combat quests or, like, things where you just doing more interesting things like one of the mages guild recommendations the one for uh chayden hall is uh where there's a higher up within the mages guild who's really disinterested in giving you a recommendation at all so he's like hey how about you uh go get this ring at the bottom of a oh well. yeah but then we're talking you go in you go into the well and then as soon as you pick up the re ring you probably get over encumbered because it weighs like a hundred yeah. pounds and then, because you're over encumbered, you can't move it all, and you'll drown unless you take it off. So there's a lot of like interesting things like that, where it's like non-combat type of yeah. things. And another one, like the paranoia quest, where you talk to Glarthir, the wood elf, in uh, I think yeah, is the town, yeah, who thinks people are like spying on him and like out to get him. So you have to go and investigate for him. There's just a lot of like quests like that whereas other things like skyrim i haven't played a ton of it the quests seem a lot of it's like here go to this cave filled with droggers and kill something <laughs> bring this object back and then that's it yeah. like they just aren't as interesting well they're not compelling and i feel like skyrim 
not that Oblivion didn't kind of hold your hand with it, but Skyrim was like you knew who the game was made for, kind of. Mm-hmm. Whereas like Oblivion, like you said, there's just so much stuff where you're like, these are amazing ideas. And like, yeah, you put it into a fucking vehicle that barely works, but like, I love this vehicle that barely <laughs> works. Yeah. I love this vehicle so much. Or like the... I... Oblivion had like no... It did have like tech tips and stuff, but I feel like when I was a kid and then got like like vampirism and they don't like really... <laughs> I don't know. There's I just remember playing Oblivion and getting like vampirism and then you can get like lockjaw, right, too, from it as one of the diseases. What's the rat disease lockjaw. you can get that's super duper bad? The only from... disease I remember is gut rot. That's the only one I oh, can I ever do. Fuck, yeah. <laughs> There was just there was just so much to Oblivion that was like crammed into it and then never explained and I I love it I love that about it I love the like whimsy and wonder about it and obviously now there's less of it but also it's it's almost not even fair to call it nostalgia because I've played I've literally played like thousands of hours of Oblivion like I've I've sucked it dry if you know what I if you know what I'm talking about Ooh. is it blood yeah. lung from rats. Blood lung? Isn't there like a... Rats give you three diseases. All right, let's hear them. Let's... Bra- bra- brain rot, bone break fever, and blood lung. All of them drain strength or endurance. By five <laughs> Maybe bone break fever, dude. <laughs> bone break fever, dude. Fuck yeah. Um, oh, they also let's... give feeble limb. Yeah, I got feeble limb, if you know what I'm talking about. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's kind of interesting um, is that like Oblivion is kind of the like awkward middle child and like the gradient of like Elder Scrolls progression as like a mm-hmm. series because a lot of people also think that like Oblivion was the beginning of like the dumbing down of the right. series and then whereas a lot of Oblivion fans or people who it was their first will point at Skyrim as the dumbing down which like it's a, a gradient of like kind of accessibility and like distancing itself from RPG type mechanics because if you look at, like, the roots of, like, when 1 and 2 came out especially, the, like, template for Western RPGs for, like, first-person stuff like that were dungeon crawlers that were heavily influenced by D&D and based on dice rolls, very, like, yeah. crunchy RPG systems. And then Morrowind was still a continuation of that, just brought to consoles and now with fully 3D models. So, like, it still has... You could call it baggage, but it still is more emphasized on being, like, more systems heavy. Whereas an Oblivion was trying to get, like, away from that because when, like, you look at it, it's like, well, why do I have to, like, swing my sword like this if it's all based on a dice roll? Right. Like, if you're playing, like, a different, like, if you're playing Grimrock or something, it's not a big deal. You click a button and then it swings your sword. Whereas, like, there's a full, like, swing animation. Like, it seems like it's kind of just like an awkward thing and then they just wanted to make it more like accessible so i guess that's kind of maybe a little concerning for the future of like elder scrolls 6 mm. i mean like it could still be good yeah that, but i do want to talk about that well and I, I i i don't think it's gonna they're gonna go back to that many like <laughs> rpg d- mechanics yeah. i don't think gonna it's be... gonna be good i just think it's yeah yeah i mean like if the quests are good if they get like a good amount of like writers on the team then i think it could be at least entertaining from that aspect but in terms of like character creation it's gonna be more like theme park power fantasy do everything kind of thing like you aren't as railroaded Uh, not railroaded but committed to a certain play style right I, i think a big part of elder scrolls is that it it came up and was distanced far enough apart that like pretty major advances in the technology happened in between the games and so i think when people piss and moan like really hard about any of the games um you know you're going to morrowind which was like it was 3d but there like really wasn't like a physics system like there was but it was like on xbox and it was like a pretty intensive game and and it was massive the scope was enormous so 
I think when you got to Oblivion, which was using a more robust physics system, uh, perhaps too robust because when I kill a wolf with uh, an iron bow, it launches into space. So that's good. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, let's let's fucking go. I think you had the game trying to adapt to like a. You know, it's like Half-Life 1 to Half-Life 2. Like, you've got these insane ragdolls now, and it's fantastic. And then I think the jump from Oblivion to Skyrim was kind of like, now it's, like, theatrical. Now the point of the game is no longer, like, being up on, like, a air quotes freeing physics system and, like, having it be immersive. It's now like, hey, uh, I notice you're about to kill this wolf out in the wild. What if you did that that cool two-handed axe animation where you, like, bring them closer like you're gonna like headbutt them or something but really it just looks like you're raping the wolf now and you're like that's theatrical right todd howard's like hell yeah <laughs> and it shifts he's and like i love that. i love that animation that's my favorite i animation. love it bro. and so i think it took like a it tried to be like theatrical to what i would call a detriment on some gameplay but like you said, if they can improve on that in any way, really, if they improve on Skyrim in any way going into six, I think I'll be happy with it. I'm obviously not like there's just not a technological advancement that's going to happen between now and Elder Scrolls six coming out. That's going to be like ushering in some new personality to it. You know, maybe like multiplayer or something is the the next. Oh. Please, no. Listen, and I, I already I, have ESO, <laughs> so I and mean, I and I agree. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I don't think that'd be like the good thing, but the next jump that's gonna give the game personality, I I don't know what it's gonna be. And if if it's just like if it's just like oh Skyrim now you can make spells, whoa, whoa, like I'd be okay with yeah, that. I yeah, whatever. If this is the best you got if, for me, give it to me. <laughs> like. I, th- it's, I can't. I can't possibly imagine what they have in store for the next Elder Scrolls game because we've not even gotten any information since that title card we got in E3 <laughs> yeah, a bunch of years ago. Yeah. Um. You know when Todd Howard fucking was jacking on the stage. And you know like what? This he was is Elder Scrolls. <laughs> he was looking like, real handsome. He was a cutie. Ooh. Um. But I don't know. I. Again, I can't. I mean, at the end of the day, if they just add in the Oblivion magic system and be able to cast spells with shields, I'll buy it full price. Okay. You know, <laughs> we didn't talk about the alchemy system in Oblivion. I can't recall the alchemy system because it's kind of confusing. It is confusing, Keep actually. Alchemy uses uh dumb. So. It's kind need of you, also need like your another mortar and pestle. Need your alembic. Need your retort. Need yeah. your uh, the what fourth a nerd, one. Bro. Just buy yeah. them, bro. Yeah, I'm using my blood weed. <laughs> what were we gonna say, Dylan? Oh, I was gonna say it's like I played Skyrim like a little bit recently, and I think it has a similar sort of system. Yeah, the that's... only thing difference is that Oblivion you need all the retorts and whatever. But then it's you just have to just combine random ingredients until you get the right ones, and then like you'll learn the different effects of them. And you have to combine like ones with similar effects, otherwise yeah. it'll just like fizzle and not do anything. Yeah, and you have to like eat just raw ingredients to learn them too. Is, <laughs> that, is that Skyrim or is that Oblivion? Oblivion? I think that's Skyrim. Well, well maybe both. I don't know. Yeah, I think I know in Skyrim you just have to eat a fucking plant to know its abilities, which is stupid. That is, but... Okay, that is it. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me just scuff down this raw chicken egg. Just to, oh, what do you know? It drains out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is. <laughs> yeah. This oh no, is... I'm dying. Yeah. Let me eat this hell dick weed. Looks good. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it, it's, mm, it's tasty so- Welkinstone. Yeah, it softens my sclera. Oh. My eyes are melting. This is not. <laughs> <laughs> this is not poggers. I think oh. that my stamina. Yeah, put that one. I'm like, he's like writing on the ground. He's like, put that one in the bag. <laughs> in his journal. Um, the enchanting system in Oblivion is also similar to the magic system which is pretty exciting but i think in skyrim it wasn't so bad that w- Sky- skyrim enchanting isn't awful yeah. it's a bit finicky i think but well and i feel like it's limiting for how many things you can put on one thing but the actual system itself i think was good because you 
Yeah. Yes. I'm yeah. trying to think. Super bu super busted though. Like, if you, I don't know if you ever did it, but like you can kind of bounce the enchanting and alchemy off each other really well yeah, yeah. if you just keep like stacking like you know make better potions but you take stuff that makes better enchantments and yeah, you yeah. Just, like, kind of stack to the point where it's kind of like well like chill out right i liked i don't think it you could really break the game with that yeah i don't could you do full paralysis uh enchantments in oblivion on weapons i don't think you mm, could i'm not sure <clears throat> i don't i google <laughs> good girl <laughs> because <laughs> one of my fondest memories of skyrim is like getting like to late game and then getting like an ebony bow and then having like 120 percent paralysis for like like eight seconds on it that was a fun, <laughs> that's a fun one because <laughs> like the, everything's like anymore. slopes and mountains and it's so you, like bandits will run at you and you're just like ding and they just roll down the mountain it's Dude, I love the rolls. I love how like how much the game seems to want them to roll. Yeah, yeah, they become they like stiff and just yeah, yeah. They just turn into a wheel. <laughs> Did you find the answer? <laughs> I I don't know if you can get like a hundred percent like paralyzation, but you can't you can get it on weapons. So. You can get it on weapons. That. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Have you guys seen the video of the the Skyrim video of the guy who uh, he paralyzes a bear on top of a mountain and it starts falling down and just starts going completely insane and the game bugs out and it just flies away after. <laughs> it's the funniest goddamn thing. Dude, those games are just something else when it comes to like how buggy they can really be. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know if Todd Howard like keeps it in mind that he wants it to be like that or something, but. Right. Like, it's insane. Like... Yeah. There's an interesting dynamic with Bethesda games where it's, like, some of it almost, like, like the Poison Apple thing in Oblivion, where they just, like, jump out of the <laughs> sea. Dude. They oh, die. yeah, they just shoot through the roof. <laughs> like, they, oh. I feel like it would have been easy to be, like, there's no collision. Like, why do they not just, like, like fall forward? Over. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, he's low. <laughs> he's low. Amazing. Yeah, it's Carl, just chief. Put, like poison damage, like a status effect that it had to be like yeah. considered physical. Yeah, attack. right. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, uh, it's yeah. like <laughs> the the animator would, or like designers ever doing that is like, oh, this person eats the apple and he's gonna die. Fuck it. And so he's making him bounce. Like, <laughs> like what? <laughs> well, and the weird <laughs> thing is, I can I can think of kills that I had playing the game when I was younger like with the stealth assassin or bow build whatever where like <laughs> the same thing with the wolves but sometimes you hit at the right angle and the head just slams into the table <laughs> if they're like sitting down at it like you get at the right angle and the body doesn't move but the head just like destroys everything on the table <laughs> there's I, uh... the, the, engine, the engine's just so unpredictable it's the same thing like you can go hit a, you can hit like a mud crab Right, you can just like hit a mud crab with like your fist, and it just flies into the air. But sometimes you hit one, and it just slumps. It like the engine is whatever it's feeling it's, today. It's, it's like the it's like the giants in Skyrim as well, with the oh whole God. fucking oh, send you to orbit yeah. and shit. Like that's the best. It's just there's so much stuff. I can't. I guess this is an engine thing, but it's so weird. Like it, it, it well, because it's in, it's in Fallout as well, and it almost it, it is. it's at a point right now where like it just seems it, it just seems like they're doing it on purpose. Like Fallout Four it being does. like a gigantic ass mess is just like well, four, four, four. Are you meaning to do this, Robert? Is this your plan? Please, please Robert Todd. I love in Oblivion where, like, you can, um, there'll be, like, a stone on the ground or, like, just the stupidest, smallest item, but you kind of, like, clip into it weird, and so there's so much velocity that you die from the collision. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, like, a coin or something. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a, my a lot of problems with Oblivion, but, um, yeah, for six, I, I'm hoping... I need one or two things to be happy, I think. If cuz the Skyrim engine really isn't that bad. 
it's it's a oh, huge man. juxtaposition from the Oblivion one, but really, I mean, it's the engine's not horrible, and they were obviously able to do a lot with it. Um, but I think if we had like an expansion on like spells and stuff, um, mm-hmm. I would be happy. And then just a little bit more class identity, just a little bit. Like yeah. I agree. That would make me happy. The, I the setting I have no idea. I, I'm not even going to speculate. I I think people have already kind of uh, kind of pinpointed it because like like High Rock the, or whatever the Red Guard one. Yeah, it's because like the terrain matches a certain bay, which is shown off in the trailer. Because you know Skyrim Elder Scroll fans are like on crack twenty four seven. So Dude, they are. They are a different breed. Imagine being that addicted to a franchise that you. Can... <laughs> pinpoint yeah. like on. off like a 10 second like title reveal you can pinpoint the exact location and what angle it came in at. well and be that <laughs> addicted to a franchise that has like murky at best lore true mm-hmm. very true that's like impossible to like get down because there's a billion tellings of it and the only time you can like get it is either you read all 500 books in skyrim and oblivion or you read <laughs> someone else's account of it online who it- read those stuff yeah. Is it even an Elder Scrolls like book line? There are. I've read two of the books, uh, Infernal oh, City they? and uh, whatever the second one is. They're kind of bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, it's it's kind of a bummer because I I just recently realized they were real. I I thought it was always like a like a fan thing that I had always seen because they oh, yeah. they were not popular. Um, and they happened directly after, like, 40 years after the Oblivion Crisis, I think is what it is. Uh, um, okay. Which is, like, why wouldn't you just write during the Oblivion Crisis? But that's fine. You can go. You can fuck right. me. That's okay. You can just yeah. fuck my shit yeah. up, though. Oh, that's please. fine. Um, they're okay. The, the writing's not bad, and there's some, like, really interesting, like, artistic ideas that they do. Um, but the it, it's like Did- the characters are not good because you have zero attachment to any of them because what characters do you care about in oblivion or more when for real like that's the Literally one none of them yeah that's like the issue that i i shouldn't say issue but oh no lucy and the chance died like <laughs> yeah <laughs> like who? wait who oh the great oh, fox no yeah yeah, ex- yeah. yeah exactly like you you don't have any attachment to any character <laughs> in any game so it it like kind of tries to put forth characters that maybe you should care about or know but yeah oblivion lore elder scrolls lore in general is just so like if you're not talking about like very iconic gods and like morrowind or like tiber septum Mm -hmm. you're you're just like this is it's i don't know the lore for elder scrolls is like the messiest thing in, of any series like it's yeah. more <laughs> like since i've been playing it it's my point of reference but it's worse than kingdom hearts lore Oof. because at least that's <laughs> nonsense but like there's it's consistent kind of but then like elder scrolls the thing is it's when they made the first game in the 90s they weren't gonna be like oh this is our our universe we're gonna keep around forever and expand on with like four more games and an MMO, which we don't even know what that is yet because this is the nineties. Yeah. But like, then they had to expand upon that. And then they like made the sequel. And then it's like, they had to make all these other concessions. And then because two had three different endings you could get, they also had to explain that away with dragon breaks, which is basically oh, saying God. the, the elder scrolls timeline broke into separate pathways but they all reconverged in morrowind and then it's just like that's all that they're like lore explanations for major events happening is that there's dragon breaks which is like the main adra what i can't think of what his name is the one who's like a dragon and also a man and he's uh that he's the dragon so that explains all the weird timey wimey nonsense (laughs) he's a dragon right it's just it's just so goofy and then like the thing that people like lord nerds were like vian was stupid because it's all like just kind of a european 
forest for most of it, whereas in the lore it was supposed to be like half of the region was a swamp, which you kind of get in the southern part, but it's like not really committed to that like aesthetic or anything. Yeah, like south of Breville you kind of get it, but... Yeah, it was supposed to be like two major things with like I think one was more like an upper class type of society and then the other half was like swampy areas, but like they just threw that out the window completely. And then it's also goofy like in Skyrim that like Nords being able to shout was like a pretty common thing. But then like you're the super special boy in Skyrim who's the like pretty much the only one who can do it more or less. Whereas like in the lore it was like, oh, Nords for like taking down castles they would all shout at it to tear the walls down Hell but then yeah. that's not reflected in any of the games yeah they're like oh <laughs> you don't do that in here shani don't do that yeah don't do that yeah. uh also yeah. not to detract this conversation at all it'll be real quick going back to when uh dylan mentioned kingdom hearts there is no such thing as kingdom hearts law when you have goofy fighting alongside you anyway continue yeah, but he's integral to the lore. <laughs> no, he's not. It's not yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, the Disney lore. The Disney yeah. lore. Um, yeah, yeah. I. It, it's at a point where, like, I'm also not... Comp- and, you know, we've talked about uh, World of Warcraft on this podcast before. And, uh, we have? Yeah, <laughs> yeah what? Uh, there's something about WoW that makes you want to learn stuff, makes you want to Google stuff, makes you want to experience it. Um, there's, like, no point where, like, overarching, like, big story lore in any Elder Scrolls makes me want to, like, ooh, let's learn about the Nine Divine. Like, I do not give a shit. <laughs> I, mean, like, I just about, like, the different cultures and, like, there's a few kind of big things. It's, like, if you dig, like, a little bit deeper than what's presented, you'll learn stuff. Plus, from just talking to NPCs, you'll kind of learn, like, different tidbits. Right. But, like, that's kind of the interesting part. But, like, oh, there's this war and this divine intervention shit. Like, that's not really the focus yeah, of I'm the like, war. This is... Or at least, like, that's not something anybody follows, really. So, yeah. But I read the books, and I, I don't not recommend them, but they're, like, I don't. Spend your money on food. Don't 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 start <laughs> to read these books. Don't buy Todd Howard book. Spend your money on food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, enough. Yeah, you're like you're like, do I buy Infernal City or do I eat? Eat. Do I buy a single eat. McDonald? Yeah, do one I buy McDonald's. a Mac- Man, one McDonald. <laughs> They closed a the McDonald's by my house recently. I've never seen a McDonald's stop Dude. being somewhere. Uh, yeah, what the hell? I've never oh, seen one closed. They closed the, the one in the Midland Mall, too. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Several years ago. Or, I mean, McDonald's the... McDonald's closing mall. down? Question mark? I've literally never seen one not... I've, yeah, I've never seen I've never seen a McDonald's close. That's insane. Yeah. I've, I've seen one relocate, and they've built another store up and just left the other one to rot. But... Right. <laughs> right. You know, as, as you do in uh, Brisbane. Um, not Brisbane. No, I don't, I'm not. I don't want to dox you. I know, but Brisbane I'm has trying, like two kangaroos and I'm, a wallaby. I'm trying to obfuscate where you are, my This is for you fighting Interpol, okay? This is for you. Yeah, screw you, Interpol. <laughs> IRA for life. Oh, so. you. Oh. <laughs> Hell yeah, buddy. You doing support in this game. Sean, Sean gets it. And he is My Irish. Man. Yeah, but Sean's, he Sean's an Irish him. Catholic, but not the not the fundy kind. He's a... Right. The fun kind. I'm the fun kind. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that was a big ha-ha. Uh, what do you guys Thank not want to see in Elder Scrolls Six? Like, on a multiplayer, multiplayer yeah. is the big thing. I don't want them to pull a seventy, a seventy-six. Okay, so. now hold on. They could make a multiplayer version of that no. that is not like scalping people for money. <laughs> That's it's fun, possible. Like, I don't... It's possible. I don't think the issue with seventy-six is that it was multiplayer. I I think I think it is. I I think a big thing was. To me, anyway, I think thought it was because I don't know those games. As much as I understand, people would love like 
a multiplayer aspect. I think they thrive really well at being single player games with people coming back to them. The modding scene's always blowing up. You know, it's. I think the. It. I think building up your title and then being like, we've exclusively pretty much done single player games with stories. Let's flip it and now introduce a multiplayer component to these games. You know. Well, I, I, I feel. I, I definitely I, I agree know. with like if you've spent the last 30 years making single player games and now you're going to ambitiously make your game, but in multiplayer, yeah, that you're going to have problems. Yeah. But like, if it was done right, I think it's a great idea. I, I, I guess again, I don't know. It's, I would prefer them to regardless have a bigger priority on the single player aspect, you know, that's my biggest thing. I agree. No, I, I totally agree. I'm, I'm not looking for multiplayer myself. I, the more that I think about it, I, I actually am kind of expecting it now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> um, but they could do it tastefully, I think. I hope. I mean, if they I, do go down that path, I hope they do it carefully. So carefully. Maybe they'll do Dragon Break stuff, and you're like, I'm the other champion of Cyrodiil in... I'm Dragonborn too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like an alternate timeline. Um, I really would not. I know it's not set in Skyrim, so it's not going to be the same like Nordic trope stuff. But like, mm. I really hope whatever they do next is got some kind of identity. That's, I agree. That's I agree. not a f like a fur pauldron. Like, I would love anything yeah. else but that. <laughs> i i get i get because it's like it's it's, a, it's regional it's a regional thing but i really hope they don't try and restrict themselves to such like a like a region i guess like i guess that's kind of goes into like I, I would want them to expand maybe so you can do it go to another province or whatever because there's a lot of provinces but oh no that's interesting that would be a but yeah, no, I agree. I agree with the sense that I don't want them to be like, oh, because you're now in like what is what was it again? Like Red Guard or whatever. Where, where are the is Red Guards from? Is it High Rock? I think or is, which I thought, one? the Red Guard. Uh, Hammerfell. Hammerfell. Red Hammerfell. Yeah, Hammerfell. Yeah, Hammerfell. Yeah, if it's like in Hammerfell, I don't want it to be like Arabian themed all the time. You know, like I like having variety there, and even though it's regional, I prefer variety over regional design. So. I don't want copy paste house forty times. I agree. So. Yeah, I I just I hope I hope more than anything that we get just a, just even like within whatever region we're in, just like it, that's what bothered me about Skyrim was like everyone looked the exact same way in like White Run sure. that they looked in Dawn Guard that they looked in Riften that they like the guards changed, but. I don't know. There's something about Oblivion where, like, everyone in Breville is, like, wearing burlap. Like, I I buy that. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I'll buy you burlap sure. sex. Yeah, I'll buy you burlap sex. <laughs> um, I don't know. I hope there's a little bit more of that. We'll I see. agree. We'll see. We'll see what it does. Uh, do you fellas have anything else to add? Uh, I don't think so. Make the horses in the next Elder Scrolls game not fucking cows that you ride on, bro. Like, I'm sorry. Mm, so, fair. Like, Skyrim horses are a fucking not a horse. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the one that I hate the most, or the, the kind of general thing that I hate the most, is the, the just completely... It sounds like every proper noun and every the lore thing was just pulled out of a fucking hat i mean i guess it goes with hayden's thing about the identity but i just feel like every new character that you hear about is just the blandest most forgettable i just i can't even remember half of it you know i don't know i felt that way in skyrim a lot like all of the characters and all of the all when you were getting into all that celestial stuff the augur yeah. of dun lane kill me dude so stupid <laughs> kill me so stupid yeah it's it was well, stuff like that and well i just even in like skyrim i didn't get drawn into the like imperial versus nord i'm like this is fucking kind of stupid yeah they couldn't yeah because there was one guy doing the voices for every single person yeah. in the entire game 
This is the, this is a Skyrim. We hate Skyrim podcast. Uh, yeah, and then, yeah. yeah, and then they have like weird like Skyrim is for the Nords. Like, well, yeah, yeah. This like, the white power. The first thing you walk in, the first thing you see when you walk into Wingard, with a hold is just racism. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. My like, white nationalism in Skyrim. Skyrim. Yeah, like, yeah, ma. <laughs> the alternative is fucking imperialism. Yeah, it's, and it's like well, <laughs> and then you have that whole. You have that whole like weird side thing with uh, Ulfric being a fucking spy for the, the like Thalmor, the Dunmer. Yeah. Yeah. The Dunmer like, for the. Th- oh, the Thalmor, yeah, that's Thalmor, right. yeah. The oh, elves the look the same, bro. Okay, Whoa! Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, dude. <laughs> yeah. Hate the elves. Yeah, you can say Noa. You can't say. <clears throat> anyway. Whoa. Anyways. Oh, bring, man. You know, if it what if it went to like the Somerset Isle, that'd be sweet. That'd be cool. Wait, did like they, that. Did they, do, they did that. Yes, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, they had a whole expansion about the Somerset Isle. Whoa. Okay. First of all, stop jumping down my fucking dick hole. <laughs> Second of all, they've done <laughs> every expansion. They've done every. They've done every. Expa- they've done Morwen. Yeah. They did. It's, they're in Cyrodiil right now. Elsewhere yeah. for Elder Scrolls Six. Kitty time. Mm. Get out, you stupid furry. Stop Ooh. it. <laughs> like, I wouldn't... not going to Elf. As if it wouldn't be the most interesting, because then you could see all the different kinds of Khajiit. You could see the, the battle cats and the house cats. Well, they did that in ESO, so... Like... Well, then why don't... <laughs> then I'm surprised they haven't just gone, well, ESO is Elder Scrolls Six now. I... Just yeah. like we're never going to get a Warcraft 4. Wow, yep. is our Warcraft 4 Put a little now. line on top, of the, on top of the O and make it into a 6. We're done. <laughs> Uh, is Elder Scrolls yes. Online good now? It's I've heard good. good things about it, but I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's a cool playing it like just to fit, like see the world of like what you know, like uh, like us playing like Morrowind and Oblivion and Skyrim and all that. It's cool seeing the other parts of the world and yeah. everything because. Like they still stick to the same designs as prior games in those areas. I'm pretty sure. Like the the, the designs. So it's like I don't know. It's cool. It's just again, it's one. They've only got NA in Europe servers, and the combat is noticeable when you're playing from Australia. So the ping is just there always. But I don't. I don't. I don't like the whole the weird. It's. It's obvious, like it's MMORPG, obviously, mm-hmm. but it's I don't know, it's 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 weird how they do it with like mo- the movement is like you it can feels... move in here, and, yeah, yeah. It's like kind of a weird in between between the Elder Scrolls normal combat and MMO combat, like tab targeting. It's mm-hmm. like I don't know, it just kind of felt weird when I tried playing it, but I. would I'd go back to it and try it again because maybe it was missing something. I played it when it came out, and I was like, "This is so stupid." <laughs> uh, I definitely well, think it, it sounds like better. they've improved it a yeah. lot. Yeah, and it's I got a bigger following. When the game first came out, if you got a bounty from the guards in the earlier areas, um, and if you start, you can keep stacking it by attacking guards. And like, if you die, you get back up. You still had the bounty. So if you you get it to the point where you can't pay off the bounty, for, for, so for the entire time, you just got this permanent bounty on you. And that was like the start of the game and Hell how yeah. you could like, and like stuff was like you you were restricted to you were restricted to factions, yep, whatever class that. you chose. So you couldn't play with friends if you wanted to be a cat, or if you wanted to like side with the Dunmo and stuff like that. And there's definitely a lot of designs that were just bad, but. They've definitely improved it since launch, like, big time. <sighs> I'm probably not going to play it. I'm just curious. No, yeah, because it's also, like, 200 gigs. So. 200 gigs? For... I think that's overstated. I'm, I'm overstating it a bit, but it's definitely up there. It's a it's a big game. It's a huge game. No. Just... Come on, I'm going to look sure it's, right now. I'm pretty sure it's bigger than... I feel like it's bigger than Warzone. Base game is 85 gigs, but with all the DLC, then, then you... I'm sure it's... And then that's yeah, and that's also, I don't know if that includes the um, oh yeah, it's a hundred gigs. It's a hundred gig disk space, and then you have to download through the launcher as well. And then ah, yes, you got to download all the DLC, and then <laughs> it's a biggin. It's a biggin. Interesting. Instead, 
you can try the critically acclaimed MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV, uh, where you can play the entirety of a Realm Reborn. Cut, cut, cut the, cut the, cut the line! No, no, no! Shut down level sixty for free with no restrictions Shut on playtime. Shut it's it down! So Shut it down! So good, except for the PvP. Only bad part. <laughs> well. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's uh, I'll try it, Dylan. It's a crying shame. Hell yeah! No, I you won't. I, I, yeah, I yeah, probably. Yeah, won't. he actually probably won't. <laughs> Sean never does anything I tell him to. Um, hey. <laughs> mostly true. Yeah. Hey, you're right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. Final Fantasy fourteen is fine. I don't know. I I played it back in the day, and it was it was fine. I don't. I I kind of like. I haven't even really been playing WoW lately, guys. I'll be honest with you. Like, uh, Me neither. A world explosion. I just, uh, it's not like I don't want to play it. I just don't. i done nothing with it. Like, it's yeah, not 9.1 even like is or... like not coming ever. And you know what? I pretty much played seriously, like, like almost, God, when it probably 200 hours of PvP Shadowlands, and I'm good on it for now. I can't. Yeah. I'm I've played a lot of it and I I'm good on it for now. Okay, well we should probably call it here because now we're talking about WoW and Oblivion. Oblivion. We are talking about <laughs> yeah, Oblivion. Oblivion. <laughs> Very stupid but pretty fun. Yeah, honestly, that's like hey. my my lead off with it at this point is like it's not just nostalgia for me because I, I've just I never stopped playing it. It's just like wow, like I don't have I I don't have nostalgia for WoW because from like 2008 until now I have played WoW. And yeah. since 2006 with Oblivion, I've played Oblivion like all the time, all year with mods and stuff too. So you know, it's not like a nostalgia thing, but every time I play a new game, there's like just a little tick of that like love for Oblivion that like yeah, goes down just a little bit. But I'm sure that'll never uh, get to zero. Anyways, uh, that concludes season two, Clue. episode one. Yeah, that's the entire season. We're done. Podcast. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. This is it. Goodbye. Thanks. Thanks for our Patreon subs. You're uh, welcome. Oh, yeah, we don't know <laughs> who it is. We just have a sneaking oh. suspicion. It smells like. Weed and alcohol oh. and a bit of cobbler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It smells like Stonehenge and whiskey. I was, g- yeah. I was gonna say it's got a a distinct fermented smell, but um, mm-hmm. anyways, <laughs> we won't talk about the classic Irishman's dilemma. That's this isn't the time, right. place. Not the time or place. Okay, we will be back. I don't know with what, and I don't know when, but. Uh, uh.